let's go. Holy shit. Did you hear that? What was that? I thought, I think it might have said, it, that's exactly what it said. That's what I thought it said too. Did I, everybody else hear that? Okay. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> All right. All right. Welcome here back to the Bunny Rabbit's Hole. This is the Bunny Rabbit's Hole. Of course, I am one of the hosts here, Jason, and the other host is. I am Craig. All right. So, for those of you who don't know, those of you who have been here, just deal with it. What we do here at the Bunny Rabbit's Holes, we come up with a theme each and every week. We talk about that theme until something inspires us to talk about something different. We talk about that for a long time or until Craig finally says, you know what, shut the fuck up and let's get back on topic. Yes. And as Jason said, we pick a central theme and we do research on that for a certain period of time. We try to research both for and against, um, but we also include our opinions because this is entertainment and it's our show. So we're going to include our opinions. And if you're easily offended, get the fuck out. Yeah, you know, let we, we also say here at the Bunny Ramp's Hole that being offended is a choice. Yes. And staying here is also a choice. And we right. respect that choice a lot more than the other choice. So please take the choice and make your choice the right choice and choose wisely. And remember, choosing is losing. I mean, choosing is not losing. I mean, I don't know what I mean. Caring is not sharing? Or well, sharing is caring? It depends on what you're sharing. If it's like an STD. Maybe it's Karen is sharing, and she's sharing the STD. It could be. Yeah, Everybody watch out for Karen. Watch out for Karen, that CD bitch. Yep. Fucking scary. Right. Anyway, right. so what are we going to talk about today, Craig? Today is part two of well, last week's episode of... Ghost stories, right? Yes, so places that I meant to talk about last week, but... I got sidetracked. <laughs> so, because we had it, we were trying to get a sponsor last week. Yes. If you don't remember, it was a uh, Crown Royal Apple and Monster. Yes. Yes. You, you were on the Hydro. I was just on the regular 666. Yep. So, today, I scaled back. I'm just doing my regular black coffee. I'm still on the Hydro. I do have the Crown Apple, but I won't be, I won't be partaking tonight. Because it's a long day at work and I'm kind of tired. <laughs> oh, I get that. Well, and one of these days, you guys can uh, hit us up on our Patreon page and then you can uh, help us not have jobs. And then we can drink on air all the time. Right. And we can like do shit on location. Ooh. Like it, like we talked about last week, we talked about a Kickstarter. You know, if you guys want to see us go out to these spooky places, and you know you start up kickstarter so we can buy all the equipment that we need and hire a cameraman to go with us we'll do it and you tell us where you want us to go we'll fucking go there yes and uh the only place i won't go is karen's house right that, CD that shit is too spooky right that shit stays with you that's like uh you know that that shit that comes home with you from vegas that's like karen's house right Right. So, all right. Anyway, <laughs> so I want to start off tonight with there's in my town, there's a used to be a movie theater. Okay, originally it was built in the late 1800s. The place is called the Broadway Theater. Now they just have plays there, but back in the late 1800s, it was a vaudette. Mm. So they have a lot of vaudeville shows. People used to say that it was like, you know, um, uh, a whorehouse, but I can't find that in any of the history on it. Right. Um, but it's been it's been through several different owners, and there are just tons of stories. Now I've directed plays there, so it's uh, I'm jumping all over the place. I'm sorry. So it was built in the late 1800s as a vaudeville, and then it went through. They had like musicals there. They had like opera there, and then you know around the 70s it was bought by you know the local theater owner and it was turned into a movie theater mm -hmm. well, i've seen quite a few movies there i have too i actually when i was like 16 when um oh that robin williams dead poet society came out mm. um 
at that point, that movie theater had been scaled back to a cheap movie theater because we had mm -hmm. a bigger theater. So things that had to run at the bigger theater after they run their course there, they'd go there and you could watch it for a dollar fifty. Mm -hmm. So I watched. I went, I think, five days in a row and watched Dead Poet Society nice. <laughs> for pretty much still less than what it would cost to go there now and watch it. <laughs> yeah, I I but, saw uh, uh, Pulp Fiction. Mm. like three nights in one week there right we drove Didn't all the way up. we drove because i lived like you know it was like a 15 minute drive from mount pleasant but right. we drove we drove up there three times in one week to see it yeah didn't you and i go there and see from dust till dawn yes because i kept laughing through it <laughs> and yeah. people were glaring at me yeah it was it was a funny movie though yeah <laughs> but yeah so after they stopped running movies, it was then sold to a community group called the Friends of the Broadway. Mm. And then they started doing plays there, which I've directed a couple there. Um, but there are so many spirits attached to this place. Mm. Like up in the old projection room, you know, because there was always that glass thing where they'd shoot the projector through. Right. That glass partition, a little window, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're in there during the day, some because there's you'll get some ambient light from outside that comes through other rooms and kind of gets into that room. Mm -hmm. The room is mostly dark, but you know light will come in and you can kind of see the light, you know, in the window because the window's still there. And you'll see every once in a while you see a shape move in there. Mm. Now I've been in there during the day because I had to do stuff. I had to do scenery, paint scenery, and stuff like that for the place. And I'd see that, and I'd go up to check it out. Be nothing in there. No, I'm the only person in the entire theater. Nothing in there. Um, and, you know, there's, there's stories of down below the stage, there mm -hmm. are dressing rooms and a bathroom. And there, there's, when you get down, you go into this little hallway underneath the stage, and directly to your right is the bathroom. Right next to that is the women's dressing room. The next to that is the men's dressing room. Then two other rooms for supplies. Mm. So in the women's dressing room, you know, the women would have all their costumes hanging and stuff like that. And, you know, they would leave them all there. They'd go home after their show and stuff and then come back the next day. And their costumes are in different places. Oh, weird. And nobody's been in there. Huh. Um, there people abuse the bathroom down there and heard voices in the bathroom with them. Yeah. Um and it's a creepy little bathroom too. <laughs> you know, you're basically you're you're kind of in a basement at this point, you know. So right. there's no windows, there's no outside light. It's all dark. You turn off the lights, it's pitch black. Um hmm. but there's also a balcony. Do you remember the balcony there? Yeah. I do. All right. Now, I've been in there many times by myself. You know, when I was directing the plays, I had a key to the theater where I could go in and take care of stuff that needed to be taken care of. And I was always the first one there, you know, before rehearsals. And, mm -hmm. you know. So I would go in there and um, we have what we call the ghost light that was on the stage that we always kept on. Right. Um, and that's that's common practice in most theaters. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'll go on, turn some lights on, shut off the ghost light, slide mm -hmm. over to the side. And then I'd be sitting there and I'd hear somebody walking. I'd turn around, still nobody there. And I'm like, okay, the only door that is unlocked right now is the door at the back of the stage and I'm here and I'm facing that door and I'm hearing stuff moving behind me. So nobody can, I would have had, I would have heard somebody unlock the door out front and come in. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Well, that's interesting. And <laughs> I didn't let it phase me because I never got a dark feeling from the place. Whatever is yeah. there is more playful mm -hmm. and, and it's not harmful, so but there's been times where I'm like sitting on the stage, I have the whole cast in front of me and I'm talking to them and I'll look up and I swear to God, I see somebody sitting in the balcony. Mm. 
and I'll do a double take and look and they're gone. Hmm. You know, See, actually, I heard an old story that it was a, uh, it was Gerald Fitzpatrick the third. He was a third generation jizz mopper that came over on the Mayflower and then he kind of his family like relocated to mid Michigan. He worked at the Broadway was killed in a, uh, you know, lantern fire down, down below. And he haunted the place. Oh, and he just wanted to funny. make sure he was all, he shows himself now because it's, there's no women that are being abused and abused anymore that needs to be cleaned up after. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that makes complete sense. I, I thought so. But you know what's really odd about the haunting of the Broadway? What's that? Two buildings down is another business called Grace Furniture, mm. which is also haunted. Mm. Both built around the same time. And at one point, I believe somebody was saying that they were kind of attached. I mean, because I say two buildings down because there's a little diner in between, a little Stan's diner. Yeah. And I think there's some apartments above stands. Then you have Gray's. Mm -hmm. Gray's has three stories. Yeah. And, you know, there's a bunch of stories that people have heard, like whether the or that people have shared, where they're the only person in there, and they'll hear something on the third floor, and they go up and look, and there's nothing there. Oh wow. Yeah, they even have a name for it. I think they call it Bob or something like that. Oh, weird. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, a story about Gray's furniture, real quick. We yeah, actually came out of the Broadway, and, you know, there's a parking lot behind there. So if you come out of the front of the theater, you have to walk around, basically around the block to get to the, the parking lot behind there. So me and a couple of buddies were coming out of – I don't even remember what movie we saw. But we came out of there, and being stupid, you know, 16-, 17-year-old kids, we started kicking cardboard boxes that were outside of Gray's Furniture. Now, this is 11 o'clock at night. And the one box that I kicked was solid. Mm. Like, what the fuck? Open it up, and it's an oak glass top coffee table sitting outside at yep. 11 o'clock at night. Yep. It's like, okay. They used to, I remember, they used to do that a lot. But this was in with all the other cardboard? Like, right. it was garbage. Well, um, it, it was you would have to think that somebody sat there or they, they brought in all the other stuff and forgot that. And then we took the other cardboard out. They thought it was. Still yeah. Cool. It was, yeah, it was, it was kind of interesting. So yeah, that's, that's my grace furniture story. Yeah. I've been in there a couple of times and I've been up to all three floors and you can definitely feel something on the third floor. Really? Yeah. Like I mean, what? there's, there's just, it, there's just something in the air. Hmm. I mean, there's really no great way to explain it. Hmm. But you know, you know that feeling when you go in somewhere or you go somewhere and all of a sudden you feel a slight chill and like the hairs on your arm will stand up and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Similar to that, I guess. You get that at Golden Corral. That's because of the food, dude. Oh, that's what it is. That's that's <laughs> onset food poisoning. Yeah, that's that's pre-salmonella. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's your body telling you, you done fucked up, son. <laughs> Why'd you pay for this again? <laughs> right. <laughs> so do you have more? I, you know what? There's, there's a couple that I have. Okay. Um, one I kind of briefly talked about a little bit last week is on there's, okay. I mentioned the river that's kind of separates Portland, Oregon into two halves. Yeah. It's, the, it's the Willamette River. Or the shit river, the poop river, you know, it's it's a nasty, nasty river. Uh, there's so much sewage that got pumped into there over the years, so you just you don't swim in this river. But anyway, there's one section of it that, from time to time, people will look out and see a ship on here. Now, I briefly talked about this last week a little bit, but I learned a little bit more about it, and now there there's a huge festival every year in portland it's like two weeks long it's called the rose festival portland's the city of roses so they have this rose festival and what they do each each year is they they call it fleet week and they bring in a whole bunch of navy vessels and they park them they dock them to the um 
you know, to the shore or, you know, to the docks. And then you can do tours on these boats and stuff. It's just kind of a cool, cool thing to see these huge naval vessels in town. Well, yeah. people have like called and asked, it's like, why, why is the Navy showing up early? And they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then there, but you know, people are flooding with calls asking why the, the, you know, why fleet week is early this year. Why is the Navy in town, but there's no boat. Mm. You know, people have seen this boat and it's just fucking not there. So there's a there's this ghost ship that shows up periodically, but it's not the same vessel, which is the part that I found interesting. It has been a navy ship, it has been a schooner, like a almost like a pirate ship type of thing, and yeah. then it's just been regular barges or so it's a ghost ship that multiple people have seen, but they've seen it in different forms. All right, let me play um, the non-believer for a minute. Okay. Do you think it's possible that these people, when they saw it, maybe only saw it out of the corner of their eye or something and say, this is what I think it is? It's possible because just like in Pittsburgh where there's fucking bridges everywhere, Portland mm -hmm. is pretty much the same way. There okay. are a shitload of bridges. And one thing, one thing that's interesting about Portland, though, is there are a bunch of them are drawbridges. Okay. So if there was a vessel coming through and you saw it from a bridge, the bridge would stop and it would open. Right. So lift. So, you know, so that's, that's one of the bad things about Fleet Week is it fucks traffic until those boats get in there. They try to bring them in at like three in the morning, but that doesn't always right. work. So these people are maybe seeing this ghost ship while they're driving in their car across the well, bridge? More than likely. So say the speed limit's like 55? Yeah, and there's there's an interstate that goes right through I five goes right through and along the river at that, at that point. Yeah, so you're driving say 55 miles an hour. Can you really see? I mean, yeah, you catch the ship, but can you really get a good look at it at 55 miles an hour? Yeah, probably not. So probably safe to say that. Yeah, there, I'm not saying there's not a ghost ship, mm -hmm. but it could possibly be the very same ghost ship and everybody else is just catching glimpses of it and say, oh, that one looks like a pirate boat. Oh, that, that exactly, one looks like exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, so see, see, we do do the opposite side too, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, no, it totally makes sense that you've seen something on the water that was big, but you didn't necessarily get all the details. Right. But then right. when you did look back to see the details, it's not there. Right. Kind of like Loch Ness Monster. Right. Was that, was that Nessie or was it a fucking log floating in the water? I don't know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I would wager to guess that maybe there is a ghost ship. I'm not saying there isn't. But if you're, if, like, if you're stuck in a traffic jam and got all day to just stare at it, okay, then maybe you can see the details. Yeah. But, and, oh, and trust me, there are plenty of times where it comes gridlock and that fucking traffic doesn't move. Oh, I believe it. But still, at that point, there would be more people seeing it than just you. Right. And that's a, a couple of them that have actually had a whole, like, excuse me, bunch of people fucking phoning in, asking why the, the naval one is the big one. People calling in trying to figure out why the fleet, why the fleet week is you know, a month right. early. Right. So, I mean, and these people are used to Fleet Week, so they know what the naval ships look like. Yeah. But then it kind of makes you go, okay, well, if it looks like a modern naval ship, is it a, you know, <laughs> it, that doesn't quite add up either. How's it a ghost? Right. How's it a ghost if it looks like a modern one? I mean, right. I haven't it's, heard of any ships It's not the out. Mary Celeste. Right. <laughs> Oh shit, that's the Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Christopher Columbus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mean uh, in this year it was interesting because it's Indigenous Peoples Day, not Christopher Columbus Day out here. Yeah, they're, they're slowly changing it, and they should. Yeah. Because 
he is not the one that discovered America. No. Uh, I mean, there, and that's documented history. I mean, we celebrate somebody for absolutely no fucking reason. Uh, he just brought disease over. Yeah, and killed a bunch of natives. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, so, I think we, we, we talked about this a little bit last week about the Mount Pleasant Center or the old state home or the old tribal school. Mm -hmm. I still have not been able to find anybody that I can get stories from on that. And mm. I'm very sorry because I would love to get some of the stories because it, you cannot go on the property. It is closed off. And if you are caught on it, you will be arrested. Is it considered tribal land so that you get really fucked up? It's, well, the state had bought it, but now, like, tribal people are allowed to go on there and because they've had little things on there, you know, in the last couple of years. Mm. I don't know if the tribe had bought it back or not. I mean, I hope they have because, honestly, you know, it's more their history than it is ours. Yeah. Um, but then again, you know, <laughs> it, like my... A class I had where they talked about the Elgin marbles that were from the Parthenon in Greece. Uh -huh. And they're housed in the Museum of London. And, you know, people are going, well, Greece wants them back. They're from Greece. They should go to Greece. But then there's the argument, well, there's, you know, you look, there's, a, you know, each museum has their own you know, ancient history section, I and mean, that's part of that, where people from all over the world are learning about it, except for just people in Greece. Right. Led me to go, I would be interested to see the numbers of how many people actually visit the London Museum and actually visit that part of the museum to how mm -hmm. many people actually visit the Parthenon every year. Right. And let the numbers say where it should be. Yeah, and well, you have to look at a lot of those old museums, too, is a lot of the shit that's in there was stolen anyway. Oh yeah. Like most oh, yeah. of the like like fucking Tutankhamun is yeah. in, is is in London. Why the yeah. fuck isn't he in Egypt? Right. And well, you also have to I mean, not just with the numbers, but you also have to weigh in the factor of the internet and every museum has their own website now where a lot of times you can take virtual tours of the museum and right. pay a price. So then you got to add those numbers in with it too. Yeah. So, anywho, I guess we got a little off track. <laughs> right. Um, so, another, there's, there's two places out, out here in uh, Portland that are very similar to what you talked about with, uh, what you talked about with the Broadway theater. One is the Baghdad Theater. The other one is the Hollywood Theater. Now, uh, they both were old vaudeville places. Um, one had a, a, there's a woman, a, an apparition of a woman at the, at the Hollywood theater that will show up and watch movies with people. Oh, nice. Like people will be in the theater by themselves. And then halfway through the movie, they, they see like a woman in the back row watching. And then when they go to leave, there's nobody there. Huh. So, and then the other one at the the Baghdad theater, uh, a maintenance worker had uh, hung himself in 1927 in a the theater, and he supposedly haunts the grounds now. Right. And he's the Baghdad is one of those. I was last week I was talking about McMinimins, which is a brew pub out here that buys up all a lot of these old properties and then redoes them. I'll tell you about the the school, the Kennedy School place they do, and then the Edgefield where it used to be an insane asylum. And they turn that into uh, a resort where you can, you know you can stay in these old old cell rooms. Right. Stuff, but they also own this theater. It's a movie theater now, oh. so you can you can drink beer and watch a movie. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, um, now last week had we let the peanut gallery come in. Mm -hmm. She'll be forever known now as the peanut gallery. Yes. Um, that was set in stone a long time ago. Yeah. So she talked about the place they stayed on the island. Well, one of the things she didn't talk about was at the place that they stayed at, they called it the Red Mill. 
she talked about mm -hmm. the old stone house. Well, there was a spirit in the Red Mill as well. Mm. Um, and it wasn't one that I trusted very much because they they called it a certain name. And when they were calling that, every time they would say that name, I would hear a voice in my head say Bobby. Say what? Bobby. Oh, okay. And so to me, it was like it was correcting them <laughs> mm. because I had no idea where the hell that was coming from. Oh, yeah. Um, but it was really weird because we hadn't been there for a while. So and it said, it said Bobby. Did you hear that? It said Bobby. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh, I heard it. So I think it said Bobby. Right. <laughs> well, I had take, well, well, when I was up there, the Heather and the girl or the peanut gallery and the girls were on a bonfire and I took a picture of them and my phone took great pictures. Mm -hmm. This one. They all three of them are just blurred. Mm. And I, I like first I'm like going, Oh, it's just from the bonfire. But I took a bunch of pictures, that's the only one that was. It was like something like the three of them were together and something was just kind of going across them. Mm. So the picture just looked warped, weird. Um, but there was another instance where our oldest daughter that well, both daughters went up, but our oldest went up and she had a dresser up there. And on her dresser, her name was written on it. Mm hmm And it was spelled wrong. Oh, I think she'd know how to spell her own name. Right. And she never did that. Nobody's been in the house. Oh, weird. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, she had brought stuff back down here. And when she did, stuff started kicking up here that we had to chase out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, and it's just it, it was just really, really strange. You know, some of the stuff that would happen up there, like doors would open for no reason, and you know, just weird shit. Huh? Me running on the point. Oh, I think I might talk about that before. Well, no, I don't remember if I, in case I haven't shared this before. When I had gone up to the the point that they talk about with the stone house, I was walking the trails and I had to stop at this little cove of trees. Mm -hmm. And I stopped and kind of like got lost for a minute because all of a sudden in my head, I saw myself as like a 13 year old Native American boy mm -hmm. running that same path and playing hide and seek with other natives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I know. It's really fucking weird. I have no explanation for it. The only thing I can think of past life. Yeah. You know, or just sounds cool at the time. I don't know. You guys explain it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like a, you remember the, the comedian Richard Belzer? Yes. He was in he was in Law and Order for, for years. Yeah. But he uh um he had a great line where he was talking about uh, about people always remembered who they used to be in the past life. And he's like, you know, nobody ever remembers, you know, Skippy, who was, you know, got run over by a mule. You're, nobody ever says that they were like, uh, you know, Skippy, who got run over by a runaway manure truck. Right. You know, everybody was Cleopatra. Everybody right. was, you know, Caesar. Yeah, see, that's just it. I, w I wasn't anybody important. I was just a kid running through yeah. the woods. That's funny. <laughs> that's kind of why I kind of wonder. Maybe if there's something to it. Because it wasn't like, you know, he said. It wasn't like I was, you know, Chief Running Bull. <laughs> right. You know, I was just some Native American kid. <laughs> that's, you know, it's definitely a different spin on it. Because, yeah, it's like, well, you know, I went to this medium, and they they brought up my past lives, and I found out that I was uh, Sherlock Holmes in one life, and I was uh, Julius Caesar in another, and then I'm gonna go to the Salvation Army and donate some time because I found out I was actually Adolf Hitler once too. So I'm gonna cleanse cleanse my spirit with with that, and that's oh, are, are you making amends for it? That's why you live in the trailer, and you have six kids, probably fifteen different right. guys. Right, right. 
Yeah, I, yeah, there's just too many people. That, I, I totally agree with that. It's like, yeah, I was such and such. Well, how the fuck do you know? <laughs> I mean, and that's like I said. I don't know if this was necessarily me. Yeah. But it felt really fucking real. Mm. Well, because like, well, last week we kind of talked about lucid dreaming. I was like, was it something along those lines? It very well could have been. But I'm, I was wide awake. It was the middle of the day. Mm. I was walking down there smoking a cigarette because that's where I'd go to smoke a cigarette and get away from everybody because nobody else smoked. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was still smoking a cigarette while I, was, while I stopped and did all that. Hmm. And it was it it was just a brief like probably like maybe forty five second flash. That's wild. Yeah, it was just it was just really strange. I mean, but um, I it's so hard to find maps of these, but I'm pretty sure there's a ley line that runs really close to there. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever been near a ley line. Weird, I mean, shit affects you differently. Right. You know, it's if you're already stuff. kind of in tune and you're in one of those areas, then it's like, it really kind of messes with you. Right. Yes. I mean, I'm by no means saying that I'm a psychic or I'm any of this other stuff because I'm not. I'm just me. <laughs> I'm I just I, I wish I could cold read like those people. Right. Man, I'd be I'd be rich as shit. I'd be picking the lottery numbers and <laughs> like those Long Island meet that like that Long Island medium where she's oh yeah. I'm thinking that somebody in this room has a cousin. <gasps> you right. have a cousin? I knew it. It, it it's a a b- b- girl. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, there's somebody in your life whose name begins with a J. Uh, my name begins with a J. It, it could be you. It could be talking about you. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm waiting. They're talking to me. Let me tri- Let me go through them. You're a son. You're an asshole. Oh, I'm sorry. It was a Oh, my God. Problem. You are channeling my, the spirits of my ancestors. Yeah. Because <laughs> only they know I'm, not, I'm an asshole. Right. Nobody else could possibly know that. No one ever, ever thought that about me. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and in the meantime, I'm also reading my horoscope that says, um, you're going to go to work today. <laughs> well, thanks. That just, that could go to like 80% of the population. <laughs> well, today's another day that ends in Y. Holy right? cow, that's specific today. Right. Wow, my horoscope is spot on. Right. It, was, it said it was Tuesday, and it was. Right. It's not generalized bullshit. <laughs> How did they know? Right. Oh, okay. and, wow, we got way off track there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I happen to, I was talking with some people today, and uh, this lady said her birthday was December 23rd. I go, well, mine's the 28th. We should party. And she's like, yeah, absolutely. And then another lady walks in and says, you know what? I'm a I'm a Leo, so my lion's gonna eat you fucking goats. <laughs> <laughs> so we got off on this whole astrology war for a little bit. It was kind of fun. Yeah, well, at least it's better than mine. I got two diseases: cancer and crabs. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm doubly fucked. <laughs> One of which I'd rather have than the other. I'm not sure which. <laughs> I'll let you decide. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Again, I would really like to go on a ghost hunting adventure. So we need some help, people. We need some mm-hmm. help. Reach out to us if you want to see us. Be a friend. Reach we'll deep in your pockets. Right. Reach deep in your pockets. If you want salvation, if you want entertainment, if you want to know what it's like deep inside of your heart to help two idiots achieve a dream can i get a witness ah! <laughs> amen <laughs> so anyway yeah yeah it would yeah all we need is like uh the basic ghost hunting equipment a good camera actually you could probably do it with phones anymore really <laughs> yeah and really what we want to do we just 
we want to debunk some of the some of the equipment because I don't oh, yeah. I'm not gonna listen to for two hours. Okay, so I was listening. I wasn't listening. I was watching BuzzFeed's Unsolved. And Good show. Yeah. So Shane and Ryan, and Ryan is talking about the spirit box because he's like, okay, a lot of people say the spirit box is bullshit. He's like, but basically mm -hmm. what it's doing is it's taking like, in order for it to speak any words, 15 radio waves have to line up. Mm. And so if it's more than one word, <laughs> there's no way that that could line up like that. I still mm. call it bullshit because I can't tell you how many times I've heard fucking music come out of that thing. <laughs> Granted, it is quite possible that 15 different radio stations are playing the same song at the same time. That is true, because they are all in the same program, so. Right. But I still think that Spirit Box is bullshit. I do, too. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I would give it a try, but I'd probably smash it because it'd irritate the shit out of me. All I really want is that camera so I can see dancing stick figures. That'd be awesome. It's an anomaly. It's out of your head. Right. I don't really even need an EMF detector because half time you're just picking up fucking electricity that's in the air. True. Yeah, so we don't need that. We just need, I just need this lamp and this chair. Mm hmm <laughs> and, and this dog. Grrr, dumb dog. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah, we just need basically, a we got to hire a cameraman unless somebody wants to volunteer for it. Mm hmm Just don't annoy us because then we'll hurt you. How about this? The person that donates the most gets to be cameraman. Right. There you go. But please don't annoy us. <laughs> don't tell us what you think you heard. Let us figure it out on our own. Because we're not going to fucking tell our audience what we think we heard. We're going to let them figure it out on our own. Did, did and then you hear afterwards. I, wait, listen. Yeah. It said, this is total bullshit. I heard it. You're right. <laughs> And it sounded like, uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> kind of sound like we were playing a 45 record backwards. Well, uh, maybe, maybe that's what they're doing in those. Maybe. You know, we did that one time. We took uh, another one bites the dust. We, we had a belt drive turntable, mm -hmm. took the belt off, put the, the needle at the very end of the record and started spinning it and mm -hmm. played it from back back to front yeah. and i swear to god it does say it's fun to smoke marijuana oh, i believe it because i've done like what was it it was a judas priest song some heads are gonna roll mm. and i had the record player where i was able to do it without breaking it go mm -hmm. backwards, and it said the lord is headless mm. but i mean granted it went lord is headless you know it could have said anything. That's what it sounded like to me. Yeah. Then again, I was influenced by other people who said that's what it said. So yeah. I tried. It. So, yeah, I heard it. So a lot of that shit is, you know, that they say, oh, this is what it said. They're telling you what it said. Yeah. Go back to uh, the trial that Judas Priest had when the two kids tried to commit suicide. One, one did. The other died eventually after he blew his face off. But uh, they tried to say um, that the records told these kids to commit suicide. And right. the Judas Priest, the band, was on trial for it. Well, Rob Helford, their singer, took the stand, and he said, I went through the, the Stained Class album, and these are the things that I listened to that I thought remotely sounded like something. Yeah. And one of them I still remember to this day. He says, listen to this. He plays it, and he goes, I distinctly hear... Hey Ma, the chair is broken. Plays it again. <laughs> swear to God, it's Hey Ma, the chair is broken. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, so um, now you the house um out on Picker that you guys lived in when you were a kid. Yes. Was there shit that happened in there? So. Do we had uh there was uh, okay so back when I was a kid when I was a kid I'm still a kid right. we had this uh great Dane named Dino and 
Dino hated everything and everyone but me. I could walk straight up to this dog and pet it. And I'm like four, right? I could walk straight up to him, not a problem. Well, one night somehow, I mean, this is a big fucking dog and he hated everybody. So he lived in the shed outside and he had a logging chain on because fences couldn't keep him in. Right. Somehow he gets off this logging chain and we just thought he ran away. Yeah. A couple of days later, there was a breezeway like a room between our garage and the house, he somehow managed to come back to the house, get inside the shut doors and his neck, and he was just covered in blood. His neck was fucked up, everything. Well, my mom takes him to the vet and he's like, uh, the vet's like, somebody tried to hang this dog. Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so the dog was almost dead. So they ended up, you know, there was, I mean, the dog was fucked up. So they ended up putting it down. But they, we still to this day don't know what the fuck happened to the dog because right. it, it just fucking disappeared and then reappeared inside the breezeway, which the doors were shut. It's late at, you know, it was early in the morning when my parents found him. Right. And had no idea where the where the fuck the dog went for like two days and how it got back. And those doors, if I recall, were pretty solid and they weren't easy to open. No, they weren't. We had so it, it wasn't I mean, like the wind blew it open or anything. Right. So yeah. that was one of the weird things. And then um years later the house ended up burning down. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not there anymore. Yeah, it burnt down. Um See, I always got a bad feeling from the woods back behind your house. Mm. That woods was spooky. Now, yeah. we would, you know, we'd go back there and play because, right. well, that's what I, we did. Yeah, we we talked about the woods out in your guys' house all the time, but the woods that was by ours, we'd go out there, but we did not venture far into that woods. We had a tree fort that was right near that, and that's as far as you felt comfortable going in those woods. Yeah. There was just an overboding feeling, just like, or foreboding, that's what I mean. Yeah. Where as you walk into them, and it just, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. See, like, the, the woods around your house was, it was, like, inviting. It was, it was, you know, it, like, it was almost like an inspired uh, imagination. Yeah, it really did. It was, like, going into... um it was like going over the bridge to Terabithia. You know, it's like you were in another world when you went out in those woods. These woods that were by our house, uh, you made sure you could see the cornfield. Right. On the well, edge. You know, just like like you're saying though, with the woods at my house, I think why why we felt that way is because yeah, directly around the house was all pine trees. But mm -hmm. the further you went back in, it went into different types of trees and stuff like that. And there would right. be like plains and areas like that where you could just run through with nothing. Um, but those woods were only inviting during the day. Mm. At night, they took on an entirely different feel. Well, there were times when, you know, we'd watch, well, like for instance, I think we we watched like the howling and yeah. then ran out in the woods under a full moon trying to find a fucking werewolf. Yeah. You know, because we were stupid. But right. we were, there were times where we went into the into uh, the woods trying to be scared. Right. But then there was other nights we were just in your backyard, but we didn't go in the woods. Right. And it's, it's almost like we knew we couldn't. Yeah. Like, there was a cabin back there that somebody had as, like, a hunting cabin or something. I remember that. And around that area, it didn't feel right. I don't know what happened in that cabin. Well, I, I know one thing that happened, which I can't talk about. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> you know, there was just, I don't know, there was just something about that area. But you, as soon as you got away, any direction, you were fine. Just that mm. little centralized area. But yeah, like you said, at night, we don't because we were always outside. We were outside, didn't matter what time of day it was. Right. And um, 
But yeah, at night, there was the times that we'd go out there and explore, but none of us ever went in them at, by ourselves at night. Oh, God, no. I did once. Mm. Scared the living shit out of me. I think I got like 10 feet in, heard a branch break somewhere, and I was gone. Mm. And Okay, so that's, that's the other thing about the – the pine trees that were around there were kind of like an old tree farm where they were in rows. Mm -hmm. They're in perfect rows yep. so that you had to go through the needles, but then it was like this aisle way, almost like a, almost like corn rows. Right. Right. But a lot wider in between. So if you heard a branch break, then you knew it's like, <laughs> you could look North or South and you'd be able to see something, but you couldn't see into the other rows. So you'd have to jump across to, to look down, but you could see for hundreds of yards in either right. direction. Unless it was at night, because at night, those pine trees are so thick. It blocked out all starlight. Mm. So, yeah, it's, I mean, there was a two track that went back there and we, we spent plenty of time on that, but yeah. yeah. But those, I mean, that's the only time it was at night and it was at night that I was terrified a Bigfoot. Mm. Mm. You know, for some reason as a kid, I felt like Bigfoot lived in our woods. And it, I'm going to chalk it up to being a kid and being mm -hmm. scared of Bigfoot. <laughs> well, you know, you're talking to somebody who still thinks I'm going to be killed by a werewolf. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> well, at least it'll be quick. Well, oh, I'm going to fight him. You're going to fight them, but I mean, you ever, even you see people in movies fight werewolves, they always die quick. Well, you I mean, in my head when I die, oh, I went out swinging. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's all that matters to me. Yeah, but that werewolf still fucked you up. Well, probably. I mean, you we're, probably we're talking like... probably violated your corpse. <laughs> uh, well, okay. <laughs> I won't know about it, but... <laughs> or will you? Yeah. You know, that'll be the time that it gets caught on camera. It's like, right. the werewolves are real. Look what he did to this man. <laughs> and somebody will trap your spirit right above your body, so you got to watch. <laughs> you, know, the, you know what they say is uh, you always go to, <laughs> werewolf victims always go to purgatory until the werewolf is killed, so you don't, go, right. you don't get judged. So I'll be, have to sit there and relive it over and over <laughs> and yeah. over. Yeah, the peanut gallery just said it'll probably be me that traps your spirit there and makes you watch. <laughs> he would. <laughs> oh okay we, we're way off topic but this is actually more fun <laughs> <laughs> so all right so if you watch buzzfeed unsolved oh yeah that's what we we're talking about well kind of but there's one point where ryan and shane sit down with a catholic priest mm -hmm. who says <laughs> don't engage the ghost. Don't have conversations with the ghost. Okay. Don't invite the ghosts in and do not, under any circumstances, taunt or belittle the spirits. <laughs> do not taunt Happy Fun Ball. Right. <laughs> so then, that same, the, the, you know, probably like 90 seconds later in that episode they're in the place that they're investigating and it was like a demonic one mm -hmm. because ryan will only do one demonic one a season <laughs> okay and shane is taunting it inviting it in all this stuff that the, that the, that the priest said not to do <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah if you haven't seen buzzfeed unsolved go check it out it's good yeah it's a good channel but yeah but that priest brought up some good points I mean, this is why I say don't use a fucking Ouija board mm -hmm. because you're a fucking moron if you do. Because you're just inviting shit in. You're opening a doorway and inviting stuff into you. It's a, and if you don't believe us, is there ever been a movie that involves opening a good doorway, opening a gateway, using a Ouija board, contacting the spirits, you know, bringing up a medium you know to talk to that's ever worked for some right right or ever turned out well <laughs> right. it's like you know my buddy got run over by a car and i just like to talk to him one time again 
Oh, what's his name? Casper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that shit doesn't happen. No. Right. Right. So yeah, I mean, it's just it should just be chalked up as common sense, but we're we're stupid. Look, in there's always that one person that believes that they know more about the situation than what they really do. Right. It's a, it's a stereotype that they have in every fucking movie. It's like, well, you know, I'm deeply in tune with the dead. No, you're right. not. Yeah. Or it's like every ghost hunting episode where they bring in a psychic or a medium yeah. or dipshit Ryan, whatever his name is from Zach. That's it. Zach. Oh, I can feel it, and they're talking to me. No, they're not, you dumbass. No, you I can't take you serious with that mask over your face. Right. You, all you did is went out, found out the history of the house, then went on, and then got in front of the camera and said, this, 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 and this. Ooh, it fits. He did Yay! Some, he did some research. Right. Yeah, it's... I want a true ghost hunting show. I don't want any fucking music because that's just stupid. You can't hear shit. Or like, oh, what was that? Um, that was the song you're fucking playing, asshole. I couldn't fucking hear it. <laughs> Did you hear that? No, I heard the fucking music. Well, our, our spirit box is picking something up. You listen, listen to it. So, whoop, 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 whoop. What is that? Is it it's the beginning of wood by Allison Chains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think it's the neighbor's washer. Right. It's the spin cycle. Right. Yeah. It, it. You know, people really need to. There. I mean, there are people that follow these shows religiously, and I watch them. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fascinated by the paranormal. I'm fascinated by it, but I'm also a bit skeptic at times too. We're like, okay, yeah, that chair moved, but it's really dark. How do I not know there's not there's not a rope attached to it? Right. I mean, like the one with Zach and his group where they go down in that basement and that brick flies across the room. Mm. The way it flew didn't seem right. The way it flew looked like it was helped. Yeah, your lights have been doing that the entire time. <laughs> I got ghosts, man. What can I say? Right. But, you know, it's it didn't seem like it was thrown. It looked like it was take it was guided by a pulley of some sort. Like, it's like the old fifties movies where you can see the strings on the airplane model mm -hmm. going through and there's the fan that's making it all go. That's right. Like, that's why you see the fingers come down that's holding the fan. And how many times has his stuff been proven to be a hoax? How many seasons now? I have no idea. How many episodes per season? That I many no times. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, because I used to love Ghost Hunters with um, Jason and the other dude. Like mm -hmm. Jason Howes and um, the guy that left. And then there was also the Steve, the guy that used to be a cop. Because... They mm. did their best to debunk the shit, but saying that they still had the fucking music, they still told you what every EVP said, right? Yeah, you know, let us figure it out for ourselves. Or the ones that will just put it in subtitles. Mm hmm. It says, hey, right? So it, it just went, Whoop. right? Are you sure they didn't say hey? Oh, I mean, I have. On. Oh, I didn't say John I've had, I've had her, I have heard some of them that were like crystal clear. Right. There was yeah. one, you know, and then you don't know if they're pre recorded. Right. You know, so that like there was one where uh, it was the Ghost Hunters one, and Aaron happened, which, which is the reason he's the reason I watch that show because they fuck with him all the time. It's like, and then Aaron's going to be locked in the basement for two days. Like, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that, that that's why I watched that show. But he was he was had the little spirit box and the and it came up and it said Satan. I'm like, I want that as a text alert. Right. 
I did try watching one the other day. I, I haven't had a chance to get back to it, but it was a group of black guys that were doing it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we did this because we had two <laughs> wait, questions. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm going to be delicate about this, but they, I'm sure that they didn't bring their women with them because they would be talking all the way through this movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I it, like I said, I didn't get far into it because I had to go to work and then I forgot uh -huh. about it. But I am gonna go back and watch it. But they're like, we're doing this for two reasons. One, because we want to know if ghosts are real, and two, because why are they always white? Right. Every ghost hunter <laughs> is white. That's why I'm like, wait a minute. Well, when you said there, it's a group of black dudes, it's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> So I, I want to. I'm, I'm going to watch it. It's on YouTube. I can't remember the name of it. I could probably go through my history and find it, and, sh and let you guys know because I'm curious. I want to see what these guys find, and how they do it, and how entertaining they are. Because it's like uh, Living Color or Body Count, where all black metal bands, you know. <laughs> right. No, I don't think it's that bad. But let's see. Let me go through my history, and I'll just see if I can find it. Entertain the folks while I do this, Jason. Okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get past the fact the the stereotypes involved with that show. I want to see it now because you you piqued my curiosity. Good. Uh, but no, <clears throat> the thing is, what we're talking about here is you, we're, we're. I'm sorry. The name of it is Ghost Brothers. No, you the no. Title of this, the title of this episode is a, Louis, a Louisiana Plantation with a Voodoo History Ghost Brothers full episode. Hmm. Was it Shadows on the Tesh? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm I'm watching it after we, we finish this. <laughs> no, that was a, that's a Louisiana plantation that had a, a, a voodoo pass with uh, oh ghost ghost people. Hold on, let me open it. I'll mute it out real fast. So that was a place that we actually uh, went to this place when I lived down there as a child. And they had this thing called the Whistle Walk. Okay. Where, now that, keep in mind, this is a plantation and it was from the South. They did have slaves. And right. slaves worked in the kitchen house, which was away from the building. It was an outbuilding. The kitchen didn't, wasn't actually part of the main residence. But okay. when they walked from the kitchen to the dining room, the, I'm going to call them servants. The servants had to whistle so that they knew that they weren't eating any of the food. Uh, Hold on. But this, one, this one's called the Magnolia Plantation. Oh, okay. Was, uh, is Tom Cruise on that one? No. The, the full description is the crew travels to Louisiana to investigate Magnolia Plantation where many slaves labored died in its fields the crew uncovers evidence of voodoo rituals used by the slaves to seek revenge on the plantation owners you know what because i'm that type of person i'm fucking subscribing to this channel nice they also investigate the allen house in another episode i think these guys have probably got the shit going on they're nice no but uh what i was saying is um years later uh people could still hear whistling mm up that path well you know i would like to say i hear random noises but it's just fucking squirrels living in our attic because i haven't brought around by mothballs mm. <laughs> you know what doesn't work what it is uh i thought i had mice in my attic mm -hmm. at one time so I, I bought rat poison you know the yeah. decon thing and then i took a spoonful of peanut butter Mm -hmm. And then I rolled it around on the, the rat poison and I left the spoon there. Well, like a few days later, I'm looking out in my front yard watching this goddamn squirrel flip around like a fucking psychopath because it was having major seizures. Why? Because it, it was what the, ate the rat poison. Oh. Yeah, I was sad. Yeah. Yeah, so I went with mothballs the next time. That's, I'm going to go buy some tomorrow because this shit's driving me fucking nuts. I mean, these things, are, they're just all in our walls. And it's like, come on, knock it the fuck off. Go to sleep. We, oh, they're, they're quiet at night. Oh, 
we used to get bats and squirrels in our attic in the, the house I was talking about in the last episode that my parents still live in. Yeah. That is, at night, it was like, dum, 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 dum. but you didn't know if it was a bat or a squirrel running. Right. But we had bats at my mom's house, the one that she passed away in that I talked about in that episode, mm-hmm. too. Um, yeah, because she would freak out. I'd be upstairs, and all of a sudden, I'd hear her scream and then slam the door at the bottom of the stairs, and I'd go up, and I'd come out of my room, look down there, and she's like, there's a bat. And then I'd have to go and try to find it and get rid of it. It <laughs> so never ended well. My brother told me a story. Uh, he was at home alone, and he's deathly afraid of bats. And we used to get him in our house all the time that we had badmintons or tennis rackets in every every room. So he was downstairs in our front living room, and my mom had these like lace curtains on the. It was like we had curtains, and then they're like lacy ones on the inside for some reason. Which mm-hmm. I don't get any of that shit, but this bat came flying in there, scared the shit out of my brother. He's, he's in a fetal position on the floor in the living room. And this bat gets caught in that lace. And it's oh. like, you know, doing this thing. It's like, it's trying to get out. It's trying to get out. Well, back then we had a shitload of cats. Well, <laughs> one of the cats jumped up, grabbed a hold of that fucking bat. And it started squealing. And then Matt's like, all right, open the door, let the cat outside, but the bat shut the door. <laughs> Went back and started watching TV. <laughs> uh, fuck, what were we talking about? We we're, uh, were talking about ghost hunters. And, you know what? You know, we do believe in the paranormal and, the, and spirits and stuff like that. It's just the exploitation that some of these people do for the entertainment value. Now, for- most of these people in the real life, the real life ghost hunters will go an entire career and never actually see a, a real apparition. Right. Never Let see a real apparition. Never get a... For a, a season. Right. Yeah. I mean, chance, like, that's one thing I do like about BuzzFeed's Unsolved is they really never, ever see anything. Hmm. You know, it's basically, it's more of a comedy show. Because right. it's basically Shane just taunting them and then doing shit to scare the shit out of Ryan. <laughs> nice. Like, hey, Ryan, isn't this a spooky room? Yeah, man, I don't like this room. Okay. How about you spend five minutes alone in the dark in this room? <laughs> <laughs> that's seeing and that's what I like about the the uh, ghost adventure show because they do that shit to to Aaron. It's right. Like, so there's this tunnel that goes from this from this asylum to that asylum that sometimes gets full of water. Well, we're going to see if Aaron can fit down there. (laughs) What? what? (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, any ghost hunting show that you watch, take it with a grain of salt because it's on there for entertainment purposes. You know, that's why they're on the TV show, TV channels and stuff like that. The ones on YouTube, maybe not so much. You you can't watch a show like Blue Bloods and think they're real cops. Right. So. Right. You know, and like, there's one called The Paranormal Files, which I find it interesting. It's a young guy, probably in his like mid-20s, and his girlfriend, and sometimes Mm -hmm. his parents or some of their friends and stuff. And they go around investigating, but they don't really ever really find anything so to speak but they still mm-hmm. do sometimes they have the music playing and stuff and i'm just like oh come on but i've watched a bunch of different ghost hunting videos on youtube that people that don't have a tv deal or anything like that the is it the the dead files i think that's the one i'm thinking of where it's the retired cop and then the medium i think so and then he does an investigation on the home and then the two never see each other during the investigation. And then they come together and see what they find. And she does a reading of these people. And then he pulls out the investigation stuff that he'd found out. I mean, now that one's kind of interesting because he, he's actually doing a real, like, thorough, like, FBI investigation of what happened in this home or right. surrounding these, this family, finding, you know, things that happened out in the, in the past or whatever happened in this residence. And then right. she comes in and says a bunch of shit, and he's like, uh, 
you know, uh, I got this photo. <laughs> right. But well, the, his his research is what I really like. There's also one that's on Hulu right now. It's called Paranormal Lockdown, mm. and they're in the UK, and they're exploring par places with known paranormal activity, and they're locked inside it for 72 hours. Mm. And they have a cameraman that's with them while they're doing all their stuff, but then when it's time for them to go to sleep, they set up stationary cameras, and the cameraman leaves. Oh. And comes back the next morning. Hmm. And... They don't, I, I mean, they got some of the music and stuff. It's not bad. It's a guy and a girl, and they don't sleep in the same room. Mm. Like, uh, he's like, he'll pick one room, and he'll sleep in it. She'll pick another room, and she'll sleep in it. And, you know, they're like, you know, opposite sides of the uh, prison or whatever it is. So it's it's not some paranormal porn. No, it's not. Pizza? I didn't know ectoplasm on that. <laughs> <laughs> don't you Jesus me, woman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a lot of bad jokes too. <laughs> we say enough of them. <laughs> right. Speaking of which, what do you get if you divide the circumference of a pumpkin by its diameter? I don't know what. Pumpkin pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Just in time for Halloween, a dad joke that's full of math. And pumpkin and bad taste because I can't stand the taste of pumpkin spice. <laughs> All right, yeah. Oh, so I okay. I gotta get this off my chest. Okay. Not everything has to be fucking pumpkin spice. Okay. I get it. I saw this tasty, tasty box of cinnamon donuts, which I love. I bit into one. And then this lady goes, oh, those are pumpkin. Uh, like, oh, oh, really? I, I can't spit this out here. Right. You just ruined me for the rest of the day. But you fucking Everything has got to have fucking pumpkin in it. I, so, there's pumpkin spice spam. Mm. What? What the fuck? Well, you the, know. The only, the only flavor spam should be is spam fucking and fried. That's it. Right, spam fucking. What flavor is spam? Fucking? Oh, you. Oh man, you should. Ooh, spam fucking. <laughs> you don't know fucking until you know spam fucking. Yeah. So at work, we just got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look, we're just gonna gloss over that bad joke and right. just keep on moving. <laughs> so at work, we just got in the new uh, salted caramel crown, mm. which my dad bought a bottle and said it tastes like syrup. Oh, I bet. <laughs> so uh, apparently, you should mix it with stuff. We also got in white. <laughs> White grape Ciroc and caramel Smirnoff. Caramel Smirnoff. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so vodka caramel, I'm wondering if it'd be different because Crown being a bourbon, yeah, it's almost sweet anyways. Mm hmm But vodka is not sweet. So adding caramel to it could be interesting. Yeah. I've had chocolate vodka. Yeah, is that good? It's all right. It's just had a hint of chocolate like you know, like you get a, like a chocolate mint, like oh, the, yeah. the hard flavored mints is kind of like that. Or Wait, what the, it's still an overwhelming flavor of vodka, but it, it's so, a slight okay. hint of fake chocolate. So what's this episode about? <laughs> I forgot. What, Peanut? Peanut Gallery said it's about whatever the hell we want. That's what it's about. Because it's our show, God damn it. So, you know what I recommend everybody out there go do? Hmm. It looked like somebody just took your picture, dude. I, swear <laughs> I, I know. This light's going crazy. That's why I sat down here. Right. For so, a ghost episode. <laughs> I think this my house here is kind of haunted because it when we had our paranormal episode where we were talking about the Warrens, it did yep. not like that. No, I remember that. Our house didn't like it either. Yeah. So... Apparently the Warrens are back, and we just watched uh, Annabelle uh, Homecoming or Homebound or Homeward Bound or Annabelle Home Alone or whatever the fuck it was, the last Annabelle movie. <laughs> <laughs> was it the last temptation of Annabelle? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> Annabelle 2, the electric boogaloo. <laughs> and it was like Annabelle was like the 
That was the name of her sex tape. Yeah. <laughs> she, is she's the one sexy doll. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. You're say everybody should have. Mm. Everybody should at least once in their life walk Bucket through. List. Yep, walk through a cemetery at night on a full moon. Oh yeah. Oh, especially if you do a, if you pick the right summer night when it's full and the dew is starting to rise, so it gives like a little haze. Yeah, it's fun. Yep. Uh, and do, do it with an open mind. Don't do it scared. Oh no. Because then you're going to make shit up that isn't actually there. Right. Because the mind plays tricks on you when fear is involved. Oh, well, in full, lunacy is a real thing, okay? It is the moon affecting your mood and, and how, you, how you react to stuff, how you perceive mm -hmm. things. That's why, you know, ERs are always here, the busiest on a full moon. Cops are always busy on full moons because it does make people crazy. Right. So if you, you have to go into an open mind. So if you walk into a cemetery at night with a light, little bit of fog on a full moon. If you have a little bit of fear, you're going to see some weird fucking shit. You might as well yeah. just go in there on LSD. Right. Well, and the thing is too is, and we talked about this in another episode where fear triggers the same response in your brain and body as excitement does. Mm -hmm. So that's something else to consider. Go in there with be, being calm and just open i mean you yeah. then if you see something and it scares you okay that's totally different than going in there just ah oh, shit i'm going into a cemetery night i'm so fucking scared because yeah. then you're just fucking asking for shit you're just an idiot you're it it's almost you might as well just bring the ouija board with you yeah and some tarot cards and yeah. a wit yeah bunch of incense yeah, truly. Actually, yeah, you know, I say that, but witches aren't that bad. Witches are nowhere near as bad as like organized religions. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. They don't have they don't have the body count that organized religions do. <laughs> no. No. The two most bloodiest books in the history of mankind is the Witch's Hammer which is the book that outlined how you uh, identify and prosecute and execute a witch. And then the other one is the Bible, the two yeah. bloodiest books in history. Yeah. And they're both about both written basically by the same religion. Right. So, yeah, you know, so yeah, basically don't go in there with a the priest. <laughs> well, okay. So you don't okay. You don't go with a priest in full priest outfit, and you don't go dressed as Angus Young and right. think Halloween because right. you're dressed as a little boy with a priest at night in a cemetery, and nothing right can happen. No, no. Um, but I do recommend peek into some mausoleums if they have windows. Mm hmm Because they're really cool. They the architecture that these things are made out of and the designs and stuff in them. It's just beautiful artwork. Oh yeah. Now in the last episode, I talked about the lone fur um, um, cemetery. Now it is a haunted fucking cemetery. It's an old fucking cemetery. And like I said last week, there's 25,000 unmarked graves inside the cemetery and the cemetery is really not, I mean, it's, it's a big fucking cemetery, but for, the amount of bodies that are there, it's not. Right. And I'm not telling you to go in there after dark because that would be illegal. But when you go in there after dark, you really... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you to shoot your neighbor, but when you shoot your neighbor... <laughs> there are some really, really cool architecture in there. Some old mausoleums, some old just statues and stuff to look at, headstones and stuff that are really old it's really cool yeah well and that's like um 
the cemetery here downtown that's by um, Nelson Park. Oh yeah, there's a, that's a great cemetery. Yeah, there's some great statues and some great mausoleums there. Um, mm. My when I was in my early 20s, I had a roommate and she was taking a photography class at Central and she wasn't really artistic. So she brought me along with her. She's like, I need to take some pictures of this egg, but I have to come up with neat things. I'm like, well, cool. We're going to the cemetery. Mm. <laughs> so I took her to that cemetery. We took a picture of it, like put it in the corner of a mausoleum window with the stained glass and shit mm -hmm. like that. Put it in random tree branches and stuff were in the hook you know but i love that cemetery that is the most peaceful place in this town to me mm. and Did i mean we talked about that last week it's a cool i mean we had like family reunions and shit in those parks mm -hmm. back in the day but uh we didn't really spend much time in the park no we were running through the cemetery yes that was just kind of the kids we were yep but, I, mean, I mean, okay, so Island Park and Nelson Park were connected by this pathway, and in, when you walked on the pathway, you just went up this hill, and you're right in the cemetery. Yeah, you can't wow. do it anymore. There's a fence there now. Oh, is there? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but, uh, I mean, most kids were either playing on the play sets that were in Island Park or in the water around Island Park or looking at the animals that were caged in Nelson Park. But we were <laughs> running and jumping and looking at gravestones. Right. Well, there was some really intricate artwork on a lot of these gravestones. There, there is. And they're really fucking old. Um, but there's so much cool shit in there. I mean, it was just, I mean, to me, a cemetery, yeah, everybody looks at the cemetery as an end, the final resting place. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's like the end of a chapter and the beginning of a new one. Mm-hmm. You know, it depends on what you believe. I don't know what I believe. I don't, I'm not going to go out and let, go out and say, oh, when I die, I'm going to this place or I'm going to this place. I have no fucking clue what's going to happen. Well, when I died as John Lennon and I came back as me, oh. and I, now I'm living this life yeah. and then when I die here, I'll live my next life. Because right. you before know, John Lennon, I was, uh, I was a Dalai Lama. Right. And then before the Dalai Lama, I was, uh, um, Genghis Khan. Right. And before I was Genghis Khan, I was a uh, mosquito. I thought, did, weren't you Kermit the Frog at one time? I was. I was. I, I glossed over that because I was Kermit and John Lennon at the same time. Oh, um, the peanut gallery wonders about Marilyn Monroe. Oh, well, you, you know, I was Marilyn Monroe and I used to fuck myself. Okay. So it's really odd that... Jim Morrison died a year and eight days before I was born. What? Yeah. Just putting that out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, you know what I, what I was? I almost before. died when I was one. Right. Honestly, my previous life, I was... I, th I believe trailer trash and then the life before that I was an indentured servant <laughs> and in the life before that I was an ox mule <laughs> I was a let's see uh my previous life I was um say I was a stable hand and then before that I was a, a ranch hand and then before that I was a uh, shit shoveler and before that I was a manure shoveler and before <laughs> that piss boy at one point I was a piss boy. Yeah. Right. Like, do you need a shake, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, one of Jack the Ripper's victims. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was a prostitute back in, you mm. know, very old London. I was selling my wares on the street. I was out there. I was like, sir, would you like to have a good time? And he said, no, you're ugly. And then he <laughs> kept slit my throat. Well, that was mean. Well, it was Jack the Ripper. I knew who he was. I was like, you know what? I bet you I can make him stop killing people. Saucy Jack, what's up? Yeah, I was what's wrong. Up, bro? I was just another statistic. Just another number. <laughs> I was the guy that said, hey, look. The volcano is about to go. And <laughs> boom. 
I was the first dead on Pompeii. <laughs> well, it doesn't help that you were standing at the top of the volcano looking down. <laughs> True. Like, <laughs> what the fuck is that shit? <laughs> it's hot down there. <laughs> oh, I built a Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep and missed it. Missed the ice cube. I actually uh, broke off that ice cube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. That's we're we're going too deep there. Okay. Um, so yeah. So you know what? Why don't you guys tell us your ghost stories? That's a great one. Send us okay, a bunch so. of your ghost stories, and we'll read them in a podcast. We'll we'll put an entire podcast towards reading your ghost stories. Okay, so right here, you'll see our email address. And I want you to send us your favorite ghost stories, something that happened to you. This has got to be true to you. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You know, don't give me this. And, and no, 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 selfie porn shit. You know, it's like right. this yeah. one time, uh, this really hot, hot ghost, like, service me. No, I don't want any of that shit, okay? Right. No, no ghost erotica. Yeah, when if, if I if I'm reading it and I see that, I'm just gonna delete it. And what I really want is demons. I love demons. Yeah, they're all running through my soul. And mind you, we are going to be giving our opinions on these, and we might make fun of some of them. So just you know, be open to that because we expect you to make fun of our stories too. Well, um, you are making fun of us right now, so right. Give us a chance to return the favor. Right. So yeah. So send us your ghost stories, and we'll devote an entire episode to reading your ghost stories if they're good. If they suck, if it's like, yeah, I was sleeping, I woke up, I saw a ghost, I fell back asleep. Yeah, fuck you. So this one time, I was I was sleeping, and then the lightning went off, and I opened my eyes, and there was Freddy Krueger, and then the lightning went off again. And it was a poster that was on my wall of Dream Warriors 3. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But that actually happened to me, though. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so, you know, I, you know, honestly. I was 12. We, fuck you. <laughs> we won't be able to tell if you made them up. So if you're going to make it up, make it good. Yeah. Right, if. But make it believable. Right. But honestly, I'd rather have the true stories. I'd rather have some something that's happened to you that was really weird and unexplained and we'll delve into it and we'll we'll come up with ideas to debunk it mm -hmm. but we'll we will explore both sides of it or if your hometown has a place that is extremely haunted tell us about that too yeah fuck yeah i want to hear about that we want to hear the obscure shit we don't want to hear the same Oh, we were at uh, this castle, and you know, blah blah blah, because everybody's already fucking investigated that castle. Oh man, where I live, there's this little island that it's got so many tortured souls on it. It's like, oh, you really? Yeah, it's oh, well, they built this fort on this island, and then they took it back, and now it's just vacant, and it's you can't, you don't really go over there unless you pay to get on this island to see what it what it was. Where are you from? San Francisco. Are you talking about Alcatraz? No, I've heard of that shit. Okay, that's not what we want. Okay, we don't want right. that type of shit. Right. We want real shit. You know. But yeah, we yeah obscure. Give us shit. I mean, a lot of you, some of you people may live out in the boonies, and maybe some spooky shit going on. I mean, it doesn't have to be ghosts. It can be fucking Bigfoot. It can be a cryptid. Bingo. Just tell us anything. Mm -hmm. We want to hear about it. I want to read it and say okay so and if you if you do not want your names mentioned we'll put it as anonymous if you want your name mentioned let us know we'll put it out there yeah uh international out there because i'm sure we have people that listen to this in ireland we have people that listen to this in spain we have people that listen to this in brazil and australia it, i'm sure there's some spooky fucking shit in your areas too we want to hear about I'm that stuff I'm just going to ask this, and I'm not trying to be like xenophobic or anything like this, but please write it in English because I can't read any other language. And we'd, we would translate it using Google Translate, and you know how fucked up that could be. Yeah. You, you might be saying, the ghost was so scary, and what Google Translate turns it into is, 
my dog took our crap. <laughs> it's like you could be talking about the bride that you know you know spooked the village and you know google translate will change it from bride to salmon right that was totally the different. biggest pink salmon anybody ever saw <laughs> it was salmon for miles Sorry, <laughs> yeah, exactly so cool <laughs> with that with that, we will wrap up tonight's episode. And I would summarize it, but I have no idea what the fuck we talked we about. We talked about a lot of shit. We were supposed to be talking about ghost stories, which is the second part of a, of an episode that we were supposed to be talking about scary places. And we did. Well, yeah. And then I mean, we started this one out with our ghost stories. Then we just kind of ran, ran them up. This was the deepest rabbit hole that we have been on in these episodes that's that's the subtitle of this show yep. ghost stories to the deepest rabbit hole yes that poor rabbit oh man that we're <laughs> we're up in there oh, now we're we're up to the shoulders <laughs> <laughs> but the bunny can take it the bunny can take it yeah the bunny's been around the block man <laughs> all right so with that i'm going to say insert tagline here love you guys peace out